What if your home could run entirely on sunlight? I'm Tor Allen of the Rahus Institute, standing on the National Mall in Washington, D.C., where 18 solar homes have been built as part of an international competition. Join me as we explore this village where every home is a solar home. Uh, the Solar Decathlon is a uh, competition sponsored by the Department of Energy um, in which there's 18 universities that, that uh, compete to design, build, and operate the best solar house. The National Mall in Washington, D.C. is often called America's Front Yard, a two-mile expanse of open parkland running west from the Capitol Building toward the Washington Monument. It was here that the first Solar Decathlon was held in the fall of 2002 and followed three years later by Solar Decathlon 2005. These ten-part contests were invented by solar energy pioneer Richard King of the United States Department of Energy. Well, the Solar Decathlon got started because I've been doing solar car races for a long time. So I thought, how can we do a competition with homes? You know, you get students, only now, this time you get schools of architecture, schools of engineering to design a house. But the key was, how do you make it interesting? So my wife and I, about six months later, we were on a vacation in the Caribbean, and I couldn't get out of my mind. I was trying to convince her that it was a good idea, you know. <clears throat> And so I start, you can compare these houses with heating and cooling and lighting and appliances and hot water and indoor air conditioning and, you know, judge them for architecture. And I ended, I was going like this at her, you know, ten fingers, we'll call it a decathlon, you know, and that was brilliant. That was it. The decathlon is divided into ten separate contests. The first is architecture. Teams are judged on the design and construction of their houses and also on how well their solar technology fits into their designs. Second is dwelling, which judges the livability and buildability of the homes. Will they work well for everyday use and would people want to buy them? The third contest is documentation. Designing and building a solar home requires many plans, drawings and documents. A group of architects and engineers reviews this paperwork. Fourth. The communication contest looks at the team's websites and their house tours to see how well they communicate what they've done. The fifth contest, Comfort Zone, requires each house to stay at a comfortable temperature and humidity. The sixth contest is Appliances. Student teams have to wash and dry clothes, cook meals, use a dishwasher, and keep their fridge and freezer at a required temperature. They also have to keep a TV on for six hours a day and a computer on for eight hours. Hot water is the seventh contest. Several times throughout the competition, students must deliver 15 gallons of 110 degree water in 10 minutes. Next comes lighting, the eighth contest. To win this contest, teams have to supply plenty of light with as little electricity as possible. The ninth contest is energy balance. All the electricity used in the competition must come from sunlight. The goal is for teams to have as much energy in their batteries at the end of the competition as they did at the beginning. And last of all, the tenth contest, getting around, requires the teams to power a solar electric car. Teams are rewarded for driving the most miles each day. Each of these individual contests is worth 100 points, except for architecture, which is worth 200. The team with the most overall points at the end of the competition wins the 2005 Solar Decathlon. Designing and building a house that can compete in all ten of these contests takes years of hard work. Our school started the design process uh, with something called a charrette, which is where lots of students get together and they learn all about solar power, um, sustainable design, and we all brainstorm and we come up with all different ideas. That lasted for us about four days and then we broke up into teams and came up with our own ideas and had, you know, did drawings, did some diagrams and built little models. Most of the other decathlon teams started this same way, working together in groups to develop preliminary drawings and models. After the charrette, we held a little competition where Four, four teams from our school showed their designs and professionals from the area and different professors came and 
saw our designs and chose one to be developed over the next two years. Competitions like these are a standard way of selecting the best design for buildings. Like many other schools, the California Polytechnic State University at San Luis Obispo, Cal Poly for short, also held a design competition. Their winning design was then developed further. More drawings and models were made. So this is what we started with. It was, this is the design that won the design competition. Uh, the main goal of it is, is it's simple. And from there, two architecture students spent all last quarter developing it into what we have over here. It's going to hopefully fit all on one trailer. It's 12 feet wide by 52 feet long, just over the 600 square feet that uh, NREL says that we need. Photovoltaics here tilted up on top. It's just a small little building, a little kitchen on the side, everything you could need. The thing that, that um, struck the jurors, and we had a pretty high profile architect that was on the jury um, help us select this, that we decided was really important for our team was size, that it would be small. We wanted this to be able to, we have this parameter for us in this competition, we have to get it across the country, um, 3,000 miles, it's, we're talking a lot, a lot of energy consumption right there, just getting it there. We've taken back. this design and come up with a model of it, a, a mathematical model of it. We go through simulations in order to figure out how they're going to work ahead of time, so by the time we build it, we know exactly what's going to happen, or at least we have a pretty good idea. There's always errors in these models, but hopefully we're pretty close ultimate challenge for all of these students is to say how do we get this done and it begins then saying what products will we possibly use how can we get them who will donate um, who will help us one of the groups here um, University of California Polytechnic I believe um, ended up saying that they had their master design but then they had to keep modifying their design as they ended up getting different products donated to them Cal Poly was donated many things, including a chassis from a mobile home on which to build their house. A place was then selected on campus to begin construction. It was a former softball field that was just downwind of the dairy unit. It was a very funny site, but we had a lot of room uh, to spread out, which was nice. It was a very large site for that matter, and uh, it was good for the most part until the winds changed, then it got a little interesting. The chassis originally came with wheels and its own hitch and those were removed. It was then insulated with some rigid insulation and soy-based foam insulation. And then covered, the deck was then covered up and we had ourselves a, a level surface to build upon. Uh, and then came the structural insulated panels, also called SIPs for short. And they're essentially an ice cream sandwich of styrofoam in the middle between two skins of oriented strand board. And uh, that's what made up the envelope of the house, so we ended up with a very well insulated envelope. Here stands, those will be arrayed underneath the building so that it'll have lots and lots of points of contact with the ground so that we have a dry run. We're going to go ahead and drop the building onto the piers that it'll, it'll rest on in Washington, make sure the whole system works, make sure we know how to put those on and take them off. about as far as we got before it was time to begin to take the house back apart again and get ready to transport it uh, out to Washington DC. We were not able to get all of the finished materials up and we weren't able to test all the systems. The solar hot water system still had never been tested. The HVAC system had never been tested. There were a lot of unknowns at this point uh, that we had yet to figure out once we arrived in Washington DC. Yeah, this is this is uh, the first system I ever designed and built. It's kind of neat. It was uh, interesting because we were supposed to get a power panel package from uh, Xantrex, and through some miscommunication, we got two Xantrex inverters and then a, a miscellaneous uh, bag of conduits that didn't really make sense. They were we then had to jack the house up and prepare it for uh, Terry, our truck driver, to back the, his truck underneath the house. And that was a, a difficult task, to, uh, to say the least. An inch and a half, let's go.
If we don't get through Arizona by Saturday morning, then um, we lose a thousand miles in two days. It'll sit till Monday morning. They won't let us move over the weekend. He said, you know, what does this look like? And I said, I'll send you a picture when I finish it in a couple days. And he, he kind of went, ooh. I said, well, you know, I suspect most of the teams are in the same position. And then he, he said, well, I hate to let you know, but uh, they're not. All of our surfaces, except our floors and you know, cabinet sides, are all basically the same kind of material. They're basically paper and phenolic resin made from waste paper, waste pulp. We have materials here that are all going to last a long, long time and require very little maintenance over their lifetime. So that saves on paint, saves on labor. So it's kind of like making stone out of out of wood fiber. Good way to cut one's hand. The Cal Poly house was at the maximum limit the truck could haul, stretching 52 feet in length and weighing over 38,000 pounds. Because of this, the bottom of the truck could not clear the small incline between the gravel road and the pavement. We start blocking the back now, we'd have to go two feet in the air to make this clear. Right, let's try it. 